This is the Homestead Journey Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the pursuit of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. This is episode number 34 of the Homestead Journey Podcast. Welcome back to those of you who are longtime listeners. And if you are new to the podcast, welcome. I am so glad that you have found us. I hope that you find this enjoyable and that you will stick around for a while. My name is Brian Wells. I am coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful, and I mean beautiful, upstate New York. And folks, it has been an absolutely gorgeous week here on the Homestead. We have gotten a lot of stuff done, and so I am excited to tell you about that. Let's jump right into this week's Homestead Happenings. This week here on the Homestead, I have spent a lot of time in the garden. I'm sure that is not surprising to you. I have been spending, and it's just that time of the year where I am still trying to get stuff planted and trying to stay ahead of the weeds. Um, but I did get some more stuff planted in the Ruth stout bed. It's not fully planted yet, but I did get some beans, uh, planted in there this week, an entire row of beans and also some onion sets. So very excited about that. Also replanted some squash or melons. I can't remember which that had died. And so I had a few transplants, uh, left. And so I popped those in the ground this week. But the things are really looking good in the Ruth Stout bed. And then over in the square foot gardens, oh my goodness, it is just booming over there. Things are just popping up so nicely. Now, I did go through and do a lot of weeding this week in the square foot gardens. Um, And also, there were some things that didn't germinate well. So one of my all-time favorite beets is a beet from Row 7 Seed Company called Badger Flame Beets. And my germination rate this year with those Badger Flames was really, really poor. So I replanted those uh, this week. And I also added a few squares. I actually found three squares that I hadn't planted anything in. I don't know what my plan was there, but I know what's in them now. <laughs> Badger Flame Beets. And so hoping that they will germinate better this time of round uh this time around also my pink eye purple hulled uh cow peas that's such a fun fun vegetable to say pink eye purple hull um, but they did not germinate well either so i reseeded that area and then i had some carrots my purple haze carrots my over the ro- uh, rainbow carrots did not come up at all. So reseeded that area with some Scarlet Nantes, I think is how it's pronounced. There's a traditional orange carrot and uh, reseeded that area. Had a couple of cucumbers that didn't pop, so uh, dropped a few more um, seeds in the ground in that area. And then my Blue Lake Pole Beans. It's my first year growing those. They didn't come up well either, so I went ahead and um, put in another planting of those. But other than that, things are just, I mean, it really, really does look very, very nice in the square foot gardens. I've put up a few pictures on our Instagram account. So if you're not following us on Instagram, you'll definitely want to do that. That kind of will keep you up to date with what we've got going on during the week. Uh, I post things to Instagram and to Facebook. So if you like our Facebook page, you'll also see that. Or you can check us out on our website, thehomesteadjourney.net. And that will also keep you up to date with what we've got going on during the week. Uh, But I've been putting some pictures up there of our square foot gardens and just how things are kind of popping right now. And I'm just so excited about that. Another thing that I did this week, because we have uh, gone ahead and sent the meat birds to freezer camp, The electric poultry netting was then freed up, and so I was able to relocate that and put that around the mobile coop, which is where we are housing our pullets. And so they were able to get outside for the first time um, this week, and uh, that was really, really exciting. 
watching them out and just seeing them run around in that area is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Have a few more roosters than we had planned, uh, than we wanted. We had ordered one rooster, and we have definitely more than that. But uh, getting that sickly juvenile crow. <laughs> when they are learning to crow, it's quite comical, and it's quite uh, it's quite ugly to hear. Uh, I mean, there's a beauty in it, yes, uh, but also, I don't know, it's just... Anyhow, it's a very sickly crow right now, um, and we've got a couple of them that are learning to crow, so uh, that's always uh, fun, except when you didn't want that many roosters. <laughs> and so when I dress off the hens in the fall, I will be adding a few of those boys to the stew pot. Uh, unfortunately, they're legern roosters, which there's not a lot of meat on them there, Bones, but uh it is what it is, so we will eat what we can from those. Today, my dad came over for lunch, and so I got some geriatric labor out of him. <laughs> and uh, we did some, uh, well, it's not, it's actually my least favorite chore on the homestead, folks. I had one piglet from this past litter uh, that needed to be castrated, and so we castrated him. And then we did the ear notching. I was a little late to the ear notching uh, this time around. Usually I notch ears within a few days of them being born. And I usually do my first inspection where I actually take notes on the number of teats and the personality. And I did not do that with this litter, to be honest. Um, I was a little late to the ear notching game. Like I said, I did that today. And then I was getting ready to uh, put the ear tags in the uh, girl's ears and realized that I was down to one ear tag. So I have got to order some more ear tags. Now, I could get them through the state for free, but, uh, well, number one, there's nothing free. Um, I guess my tax dollars have paid for them. Uh, but number two, I like to use a color-coded system with my pigs. So I use pink for girls, blue for intact males, and then green for cut males. And so the the ones you get from the state are all white. And at that point, then you're having to figure out, you know, I also tag everybody in the right ear. Um, but some people will tag, you know, right for the Romeos, for the boys, and left for the ladies, for the girls. So you can do that with a single color, but the state only will send out white ones. And I like using pink, blue, and green. And so I'm going to continue to do that. So I've got to order more of those ear tags. Uh, so only one of them got an ear tag, but all of them were notched. And the, uh, well, former boy <laughs> was castrated. And actually, it went very quickly. You know, the more you do it, it's like anything. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the quicker you get at doing it. Um, but man, I, it still sucks. Oh, absolutely, absolutely hate that job. But it is what it is. Now, I have uh, the one pig from the January litter, the boy from that, that I was going to castrate. And unfortunately, only one of his testicles have dropped. And so I'm calling him One Nut Charlie. And uh, he is going to hang around probably until November, December time frame. And then my dad and I will uh, process him ourselves. And my plan for him is like we did a couple of years ago where I will take the ribs and we'll smoke them for Christmas. And then the uh, the hind legs I will take and uh, make into prosciutto, the hams. I actually have a, a one from two years, well, 18 months ago, 2018, that's still hanging in my basement. And actually, it's ready to go this month. And I was going to, I was going to sample that today and I forgot. I just remembered that. I was going to sample that with my dad today, and I forgot. So I have to wait till my dad comes down again for us to uh, taste that prosciutto and see how it has turned out. The last thing that we did here on the homestead, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in the charting the course segment, a little bit more about this in charting the course uh, today, but I built some boxes around our raspberries, our blueberries, and our rhubarb 
um, so that we can mulch them, but make it look nice. Now I have mulched around the blueberries and I had mulched around the older raspberries, but the weeds had gotten in them and I didn't have any edging and it just didn't look nice. And I am on a mission to make things look nicer around here. And so that was what I did this weekend. My son helped me, my wife helped me, and I really am very happy with how it turned out. I was a few spikes short of a Happy Meal. <laughs> so uh, I've got to I've got to get about 14 more spikes to anchor the uh, the the landscape timbers that I used around them. But it, it really did come out nice. Again, pictures on Instagram and Facebook if you want to check that out. But I was very happy overall with the progress there. So again, a very busy week here on the homestead. Very exciting things happening. And we're enjoying some of the vegetables out of the garden now. We have had some salads with the spinach and with our lettuce. Had a, a lettuce salad today at lunchtime. And it's just so fulfilling to start enjoying the hard work. <laughs> when your labor is paying off and you're starting to enjoy those things and that's just going to increase throughout the summer and uh, very excited about all of that. So that's this week's Homestead Happenings. Let's jump on over to charting the course. On this week's charting the course, I want to share with you some lessons that I am learning or at least trying to learn here on the homestead this year. And, and really, if I were to sum it up, I'm trying to learn to stop and smell the roses. Now, we've heard that saying over and over again. And generally what that means is to slow down and just appreciate things for what they are. And many times what I find myself doing is I just find myself looking around and simply seeing a giant to-do list. I see all of this stuff that I want to do, that I need to do, all of these goals, dreams, ambitions, and I rarely ever take time just to stop and enjoy what we currently have. Now, I think I shared with you, if it wasn't on last week's episode, it might have been the week before, how I had simply stopped and sat on the front porch and had a cup of coffee. And it was the first time in an extremely long time that I had done anything like that. And I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. And... It was just part, I don't want to say it was the first step, so I don't think that's probably an accurate statement, but it was an initial step in the direction of me learning these lessons about taking time to enjoy the homestead. Again, many, many times you look around and you see, oh, I need to weed the garden, I need to uh, clean the chicken coop. I need to move some fencing. I need to build some fencing. I need to put boxes around my uh, blueberries, raspberries, and rhubarb. I need to put up trellises. I need to weed. I need to plant more stuff. I need to move pigs. I need to castrate pigs. I need to ear notch pigs. All of these things that I need to do and I sometimes just feel a little overwhelmed and I don't take time to enjoy things for what they are. So here are some of the lessons that I am trying to learn. And I thought that it might be helpful if you find yourself, like I have been finding myself, just driven to do, 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 that maybe together we can kind of stop and smell the roses. So the first thing that I am trying to learn is that maybe what I need to do is not just focus on food production, although that's an important part of what we're trying to do here, but that I can plant 
and build beautiful things. It's okay to plant some flowers. It's okay to sometimes have form over function. A lot of times I func- I focus on function over form, right? I don't care how it looks. I am more focused on how is it going to perform? Is it going to help me um, grow more food? Is it going to help me produce more food? Is it, and that's, that's my primary focus and I don't care how it looks and I don't care, um, you know, if it looks a little junky around here, whoopity do my focus, my goal is to raise and grow food. And there's nothing wrong with having the goal of raising and growing food, but things can look nice. And maybe not everything that I do has to be predominantly about production. Now, I'll be the first one to admit, there are times when I see things that people do in their chicken coops, and I'll just use that as an example, and I kind of roll my eyes. I'm just being honest, folks. You know, I see people put chandeliers in their chicken coops, and I see them so curtains for the nesting boxes and just so many things that I see people do in the chicken coops. And I kind of roll my eyes and say, oh my goodness, the time, effort, and energy that you put into doing that, you could have put into something more productive. That's usually how I look at it. Kind of roll my eyes. But if that brings somebody joy, if that is something that brings fulfillment to them, why does it matter? If they want to put a chandelier in their chicken coop and it makes them happy, then put a chandelier in your chicken coop. No, I, I'm, I don't think there's going to come a day. I don't want to say never, <laughs> but I don't think there's going to come a day when I have a chandelier in my chicken coop. And I, I don't think you're going to ever see me sewing curtains for the nesting boxes in my chicken coop. But on the other hand, there are some things that I can do around here that will help bring the aesthetic up, make things look a little bit nicer, make things a little prettier. And when I see those things, it can bring me joy. It can bring me fulfillment. It can bring me satisfaction. Not only do I need to plant and build beautiful things, but I also need to sit on the porch and enjoy the sights and sounds of my homestead. I need to do that more often. Like I I just mentioned a little earlier that not too long ago, I found myself sitting on the front porch, having a cup of coffee, just watching the ducks and watching the chickens and listening to the pigs and just absolutely enjoying the sights and the sounds of my homestead. And sometimes it's very easy to look at the ducks and the chickens or the pigs and see a lot of work that I need to do. And again, being frank and honest with you, a lot of times that's how I see things. When I look at my garden, I don't look at it from the standpoint of what is. Sometimes I just have a tendency to look at it from what isn't. Oh my goodness, the beets didn't come up. Oh my goodness, the beans didn't come up. Oh no, I've got all these weeds. Oh, I need to get mulch down. Oh my goodness, I haven't got the trellises up yet. And you get caught up in all of the things that you haven't done instead of enjoying the fact that, hey, my tomatoes look great. They're really popping. The turnips are going like gangbusters. That's really awesome. My lettuce looks and tastes great. I mean, you know, you start looking at that stuff and it's like, oh my goodness, this is really great. So maybe I just need to, whether it's to sit on the porch and have a cup of coffee or drag a chair up and sit in my garden and just enjoy the sights and the sounds of my homestead. The third thing that I need to do, and I've kind of mentioned it here in passing, but to enjoy the beauty and not see the to-do list. And maybe it's just a personality thing, but I, and I'm a list person. You know that, I've shared that with you, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
think sometimes it helps us keep on task. It helps us keep moving things forward. And there's a sense of satisfaction as you are checking off things on your to-do list. Nothing wrong with that. But again, sometimes, folks, my focus is simply on the to-do list. I've got to do this. 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 And then I've got to do that. And I don't just stop and enjoy the beauty that is around me. I had a friend stop this week and visit the, the, the homestead. It's the first time that she's actually ever been here. And uh, so I was showing her around and explaining to her kind of how we do some things. And she said, boy, I was so impressed as I was driving back and I was looking at your gardens and just how neat and organized everything is. And and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, but, you know, look at that over there and look at that over there. And that needs to be moved and that needs to be fixed. And that's kind of ugly and that needs to be washed. But she saw past that. She saw the beauty. She saw the organization that actually does exist, the thought that's gone into it. And that compliment is really what I needed to kind of help me see that, you know what? There is some beauty here. (laughs) This isn't just a pig with lipstick on it. There is some beauty here. And no, it's not perfect. And yes, there are some things that need to be cleaned up and there are some things that need to get moved and there are some things that are, well, not quite as pretty as I'd like them to be. We'll work on it. But I'm going to stop and enjoy the beauty that is and not get caught up in the to-do list or the things that aren't. The last thing that I am trying to do is to focus on or to think about how far we've come. You know, it's very easy, again, to get caught up in all of the things that we want to do, the things that aren't done, all of the goals, the dreams, the, the ambitions that we have. You know, I'd like to expand this. I'd like to get that. I'd like to try this animal. I'd like to move this. I need to wash that. I need to clean this. I need to organize that. We get caught up in all of those kinds of things and we're never, ever happy with where we're at. Now, folks, I'm not talking about coasting and being complacent. I think we always need to be growing and understand that we've not arrived. We'll never arrive. We don't have the perfect homestead. We don't have the perfect situation. But on the other hand, we have come a long way, baby. (laughs) Was that a Newport? I think it was Newport News uh, ad campaign uh, back in the 80s and 90s. You've come a long way, baby. But we have. And, you know, that's one of the things I absolutely love about Facebook. And, And I sometimes, I have some friends of mine who give me crap. They say that I way overshare on Facebook. But what they don't understand is for me, I share a lot of things on Facebook, not because I am wanting to necessarily share it with everybody in the world, but because I love how Facebook will bring back around memories and they'll pop up in your newsfeed. And it's like, oh my goodness, yes, I remember that. Oh, I forgot about that. And folks, I'm starting to have that happen here with our homestead where things will pop up and I look at it and say, oh my goodness, we have come so far from those days. Oh my goodness, we have grown so much from where we were at that point in time. And so I think it's important for us to remember that we have, and and it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. You may have been doing this for six months. You may have been doing this for six years. You may have been doing this for six decades. But all of us hopefully are learning and growing and and, and perfecting our craft as homesteaders. And so we can reflect back on where we have been and think about where we're at now and how much we've accomplished to get where we are now, and not focus about where we want to go. Now, I'm not saying throw that all out. Don't get me wrong. Again, remember, this is a journey. We're on a journey towards self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. But none of us are ever going to, I I don't believe any of us will ever achieve 100% self-reliance, self-sufficiency, or sustainability. 
We may come close, some people may, but most of us are never going to achieve anywhere near that. And that's okay. And I'm not, but remember, this is a journey. But our focus sometimes gets so much on where we want to go that we forget about how far we've come. And we can celebrate how far we've come. And I think what that can do, all of these things that I'm talking about today can help serve as an encouragement for us to keep going. When we stop and smell the roses, there's a sense to where we relax, we're refreshed, we're reinvigorated, we're renewed, and then we can continue on our journey, taking the next right step for us in that journey towards self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. So folks, these are some lessons that I am doing my best to learn right now. Trying to learn that I can plant and build beautiful things. And it doesn't have to be all about production. Or maybe better a better way to put it is that the only production that I get from that is enjoyment. And that's okay. It may not produce food, but it may produce enjoyment. And sometimes tending to our soul is just as important as tending to our body. I need to sit on the porch and enjoy the sights and sounds of my homestead and not always be doing. Every once in a while, we need a breather. We need to take a break. And I have to tell myself that's okay. Look for the beauty on the homestead and not the to-do list. And finally, I've got to remind myself of, about how far I've come, not how far I still have yet to go. I'm sure I'm not the only one that needs to learn these lessons. <laughs> if you found this helpful, let me know. And if there are some other lessons that you're learning, I'd love to hear about those as well. You can reach me at brian at thehomesteadjourney.net. You can also contact us via all of our social media sites. The links are in the show notes, but we are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, etc. Before we sign off for the week, I did want to kind of give you a heads up about some things that are going to be happening here on the podcast that I am so excited about. My goal is to start recording an interview every month with a different homesteader focused on their journey into homesteading how they became homesteaders, why they became homesteaders, what size of a homestead they have, all of those kinds of things. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm planning on trying to do an interview every month with a different homesteader as we focus on different people's journey. I really, really find it so fascinating what has brought people into homesteading, what motivates people to want to raise and grow their own food, and just the different, the sheer variety of ways that people can accomplish that. And so I'm hoping that as we explore those conversations with different homesteaders, that it's going to be something that is encouraging to you on your journey toward self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. So just keep that in mind. Those are going to be coming up. Again, my goal is to try to do one every month, and hopefully you'll enjoy that. If you think that's a bad idea, again, let me know. If you think it's a great idea, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're somebody who thinks you've got a story that you'd like to share with other people, let me know. And I would be glad to have a conversation with you to see if... Maybe it's going to be a good fit for our podcast. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this podcast by going to Apple, Google, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, or thehomesteadjourney.net, wherever you like to get your podcasts. I really would appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Leave us a review, a thumbs up on your favorite podcast platform, whatever it is that they allow. And folks, if you haven't already, I would really, really appreciate it if you share this podcast with friends, family, anybody that you think might find this to be helpful. As always, the music on this podcast was provided by Audionautics.com, so a big shout out and thank you to them. And until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.